Hey YouTube, this is Jaden Storm coming to Team Shadowstrike, and this is a video um, regarding something that I promised you guys um, when I posted my first Grand Ezel deck, and that is that you could expect a second one. Yeah, and that they're no longer in those hideous green sleeves; they're now in proper sleeve attire. So anyway, this is my second build of it, and I haven't gotten to play test it with it yet. I was, I did some, excuse me, with play testing with the first build, and it just. It, it, it was good, it just didn't feel right. Like, um, I do a lot of playtesting with a lot of decks and change so many things. I don't put up all my deck profiles here for you guys when I change one or two cards because it would literally take up so much space and truly not everyone probably cares when you make that small of a change. Um, you know, but I'm really, really picky. I continue to tinker with my deck until I get it just where I want it. And this is... Um, I think uh, getting pretty close to where I envisioned this deck would be, so here I'll go ahead and get into this and I'll explain uh, my choices. So this is no longer the superior ride build, so I'm using Scarlet Witch, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Lion, Cub, Karia. Um, so, you know, her ability is pretty cool. Um, whenever she's boosting an Ezel Vanguard um, and her attack hits, you get to move her into the soul, and then you get to look at the top two cards of your deck and superior call them, which is really cool. Um, because if you, um, she'll help you out if you're not really drawing uh, rear guards. Like I know me personally, sometimes I have those games where I'm able to ride every time, but I'm not drawing good cards to stick as rear guards to start building a formation. And this deck makes a formation to do as it can. Um, so, so Karia will kind of help you with that. And she's really good. She doesn't require a counter blast or anything. She just must be boosting an Ezel unit. So that means a grade three. So, and even until you do get on that Ezel grade three, she is a good 5k boost. So, and 5k boosts are always good. So now for the triggers, I, that didn't change at all. I'm still playing the four flame of victory, the two Dauntical, and the two silent punisher for the total of eight critical triggers. Um, the draw triggers are still the same, the cool little puppy speeder hound. And then for the most adorable heal trigger and gold paladin and in history, probably uh, Napgal Liberator. So, uh, 8 for draw, 4 heal. Pretty standard. Great ones. We, ha we play four copies of Halo Shield. Mark. I thought about the Quintet Wall, I cited against it. Um, you're, you're welcome to try a Quintet Wall. Um, this deck revolves around calling cards out of the deck, um, and you're going to be calling cards, you're going to be soul charging cards. I don't think it's good to combine superior calling, soul charging, and milling in the same deck. Because when you use a quintet wall, you're essentially milling five cards. Um, I don't think it's good to mix all three of those in the same deck. Um, I mean, you're welcome to try a quintet wall. I would not recommend any one. I, I might even one day when I'm at my locals just throw one in there, but it's it probably is just going to stick at four Halo Shield Mark. Um, and for the rest of the grade ones, we're playing. I'm still playing four copies of Sacred Twin Beast White Lion. This card is a no-brainer. Um, it is literally one of the best cards that Ezel has now. Um, he is basically a better version of the self damager that fits Ezel. Um, whenever you have an Ezel Vanguard and this unit is called to the rear guard, right? Yeah, when this unit is called to the rear guard and you have an Ezel Vanguard, you counterblast one, you make sure I got this right, you soul charge one, then you take one damage. You have to make sure that that is put in the right order. You soul charge first and then take the damage. This um, gives you, um, it does two things for you. It soul charges one, which, fu which fuels... Um, your Grand Ezel for your Soul Charge, and it also helps you put cards back in the deck. So say you have that heal trigger in the damage zone that you want to put back in the deck. You can flip it face down to pay for his cost and then put it back in the deck. Um, and then after his ability has been used, what's so good about him is he is still a good solid 7k uh, boost. Um, you know, it. You know he does. he's so much better like the... The, the first Gold Paladin self-damager was uh, Disciple of Pain, or Master of Pain. It was one of the two. And um, 
he was only a 6K. And I even considered playing a couple of him, but, you know, I, he is just the better option, and if you play for him, that's all you really need. For the rest of the Grade 1s, I'm playing three copies of Knight of Elegant Skills Gareth. Even though I'm not still playing the Superior Ride, this is still a, car, a good card that I think you could main anywhere from two to four copies of, and it's still a good option because he is still a solid 8K boost. So behind your Bagdemagus, it's a 20K row. Behind Ezel, it's going to hit at least 19 before his ability or limit breaks are put into account. Um... So it is so, so good. For the rest of my grade ones, as I'm playing two copies of Listener of Tooth, Truth Dendrain, um, I would play three of this, but I only have two right now, so I'm also teching one Slagle Dagger just because this was a card that I loved playing back in the day. Um, but when I get one more loose Listener of Truth Dendrain, I'll be playing three Dendrain. Now here's the reason I'm playing Dendrain. You are calling off the top of the deck in this deck quite frequently. Um, you don't want to play Silver Fang Witch, which is the Soul Blast 2 draw 1. Here's why. To Soul Blast 2, that's basically taking away one chance that you get to use Ezel. Her, if you combine her with this, it pretty much evens it out. So, and, and realistically, playing only, th playing even three of her, you might get one off in a game. Maybe two if you're really lucky. Um... But she's there, so when she is called, it's a free plus for me. Um, and I think it's a smart call. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's more of her in our book at our locals. And if so, I'm um, when I get there Saturday, I'm going to pick her up. Um, but um, uh, I just love, uh, I've always loved um, Listener to Truth Dendrain. So um, it was a no-brainer for me. Um, and uh, I think it, she's going to work out great. For grade twos... And a lot of changes in the Grade 2 lineup as well. I'm playing still the four copies of Knight of Passion Bagdemius, one of the coolest-looking 12K attackers that there is. He has one of the coolest-looking swords, and if anybody knows where I can get that exact coat, let me know, because that coat is badass. So, um, real good card to help you establish uh, your rear guards uh, and just continually push out high numbers. Get a Gareth behind him. Like I said, it's a 20K rope. That's really nothing to sneeze at. For the rest of my grade twos is we're playing three copies of Burning Scale Knight Eli Wood. This is still a very good card because when he's on the rear guard and you ride a grade three Ezel, you counterblast one and you can superior call the top card of your deck. People, um, you know, they always say, well, this it's hard because he has to, you have to guard against him, and if you call him, their people are going to target him. It doesn't say he has to be in the front row, guys. Hint, hint. I can't tell you how many times um, in testing with just the superior ride deck I would ride my grade 2 and then put him in one of the back rear guards and just have him sit there. And that way next turn when I ride I can just counter blast one and get a free unit. So he is a, he is a very good card. You just kind of have to manipulate him, manipulate your play style a little bit. Okay, and then for next cop, next grade 2 is I'm playing two copies of Player of the Holy Bow Vivian. This is an old Gold Paladin card. It's kind, it's kind of like um, the Gold Paladin's old version of a Scrad before a Scrad was so good. Um, I'm only playing two because Eli Wood is easier to get off than she is. She's in here just as a pressure card because your opponent is usually going to guard this because they don't want you to get a free unit out and then attack with it. So she's in there mainly to cause pressure. And then the last grade two that I'm playing is two copies of Mage of Calamity Trip. Um, you, you can play more... Oh, and this is the damage on Flipper for Gold Paladin. If she hits the Vanguard, on flip one damage. Now, you can definitely play more copies of this card. Here's why I decided to go with two. Uh, whoops. He lets you on flip damage. And so does... This, essentially, you're going to get to flip damage back in the deck. So you're basically giving a face-up damage to put a face-down damage back into the deck. So you can get away with only playing two of these. I'm Right now, the only two that I'm in testing with is this. I might eventually go to four Eli Wood and three of her, but right now I wanted to play Vivian, mainly because it is a little bit of the nostalgia factor. And I think she still is a very good card and can be used uh, properly. Um, so, you know... Great, uh, you know, this, so, grade two lineup, you know, four 12k attackers, three Eli Wood, two Vivian, and two Major Calamity Trip, so. And then for grade threes, my grade three lineup didn't change at all, and I'm going to explain each why I'm playing as many. 
I am still playing two copies of the Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel. Now, let, one of the reasons that I'm playing them is they're both SPs. But also, say another, it's one of these games that you are just not getting a field, that you are just not getting rear guards to attack with, you're not getting boosters. You can use this to help you out. Yeah, you're taking a gamble, but when you really don't have anything, that's it's better than doing nothing. Um, so I am still playing this, plus also with the soul charging, you might get one of these put in the soul, that way um, you can set up for Platina, platina later. Um, and also, he's still a good solid 10k rear guard if you call him there, um, but I, just, I decided to still play two, just in case for those games that you're not getting rear guards, you're not getting boosters, you're not getting a field, you can call him, you can ride him as your grade 3. Boost him with that and get two free units out. Or if you're at four damage when you ride grade three, because you're not being able, you you know you can make a pretty big push the next turn. You can you'll get a grand total of three new units that turn. So it it was just a it was just my choice. And then I'm still playing two copies of Blazing Lion Platinazel because he is a good for uh, final turn if you know you can get your opponent when you ride into him when you're at five damage and you can. Uh, ultimate break um, and plus if you're at four damage and you know you can get your opponent but you don't have that face up damage you can just call another lion and then go into that combo and finish your opponent off and if you don't finish them off chances are you're going to put them in such a big hole that they're not going to be able to crawl out of it and then the next turn they're still not going to be able to do much because if you are fortunate enough to ride platina and you have Ezel in the soul a 13k vanguard when you have pretty much no cards left in your hand is very hard to deal with so um, that's why I am still playing two Incandescent Lion and two of him. Because if I can have my way, I want to... I, if I could have my way every game, I want to I want to somehow either ride the first Incandescent Lion or Soul Charge it with one of the Lions or him. Because he is your ideal ride target uh, first. Is your uh, And I'm still playing the four copies of... Uh, I forget his name. Salvation Lion Grand Ezel Scissors. Um, so, um, and, uh, just because he's going to get you the soul charges, he, you might put that as on the soul for when you ride into platinum. And if you don't, it's still okay. Uh, so salvation lion, I'll read him just for the hell of it. Counter Blast 2 and Soul Blast 2. Unlock all of your locked cards if the number of gold paladin rear guards you have is 5 until the end of the turn. This unit gets plus 10,000 power and plus 1 critical. At the end of that turn, Soul Charge 1 and choose one card from your damage zone and turn it face up. Now, um, I'm pretty sure everyone knows this, but I'm going to say it just, just to clarify if there is someone here that hasn't seen it. You do not have to have a locked unit in order to use his skill. There are two different abilities that kick off when you pay the cost of the Counter Blast 2 Soul Blast. Two. So you can use this even if you don't have any locked units. So you don't have to be playing against Link Joker to have this guy be a threat. I mean, plus 10k and a crit is nothing to is nothing to frown at, guys. I mean, plus 10k and a crit, that's a pretty good boost. And then his second ability has uh, the classic Ezel skill where um, every turn he's going to be at 16k if you have a full field. And then if you boost him, he's going to be in the 20s. Um, the only difference between this one and this one is this one's abil uh, lim limit break is a whole lot more... Uh, I guess um, it's a whole lot more controlling because it unlocks cards, but um, he's also an 11k. But these two are still pretty much the exact same thing, except one gains power that of uh, the cards it calls out, and this one unlocks cards and just gains insane amount of uh, uh, advantage. Um, you know, so I mean, he can be swinging for 16, and if you are boosting him with. Uh, Gareth, that's going to be 24, uh, you know, um, so, and then if you get uh, his limit break off, um, it's going to be 34 and a crit, so, and even if your opponent is using perfect guards to guard the first attack, or maybe even the second, eventually they're going to be guarding with everything else and be hoping that you don't get that one trigger, so, Grand Ezel, in my opinion, um, he's also unfairly pro uh, um severely undervalued in my opinion i think this card is amazing and i think a whole lot of people are not giving grand Ezel the respect he deserves um so uh do not take my advice and do not snooze just because um you're facing you're uh facing this guy and you think he's not that good because if he's in the hands of the right player um and you come across someone who knows how to abuse Ezel decks he's pretty good so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this i hope um 
I, I probably did a little more explaining than I did um, in my first one because, with all honesty, if you play the, the superior I build, there's really not a whole lot to explain. Um, I decided to go for, I decided to put more of a spin off of it uh, in this one. So, in the comment section below, tell me which one do you think's better? Do you think the superior ride's better because it provides that safe gate? Or do you think this is a safe ride? Do you think this is a safe ride? want um Vivian um you know and you know I just personally think this build is better but you um, please in the comment section below give me your thoughts to this feedback